Hello everyone, thank you for joining this InfraNodos webinar. My name is Dimitri, I'm the developer of this software. We'll just take a few moments to wait for the others to arrive. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the Q&A session uh, or in the chat. And uh, also this webinar will be available online after on our YouTube channel. So you will be able to see this again. I'll put the time code so you will be able to find the part that you need. And the way that we're going to do it today is that I will show some of the new, new features that um, I've been developing based on your feedback and on the requirements that people had. And then we will have a Q&A session where you can ask some questions and I will show some of the possible ways that you could solve the problems that you have. And you can also, of course, ask any questions during the actual webinar, and I will try to stop and answer them if they fit into the flow. Okay, so right now you should be seeing my desktop as well. All right, and we can begin. So first of all, what I wanted to demonstrate today is um, a new functionality which was just built in and uh, this functionality is basically showing the evolution of the graph so you can see how the graph dynamically evolved over time i actually prepared a graph here it's a visualization of a book that we're going to publish or it's a draft of the book actually and uh, this is the, visual, the, the visualization of the book itself. So what are the main terms, how they're connected, what are the main topics inside, you can see it here. It's actually a PDF document that the author sent us. So it's a book about exercise programs and kind of designing an optimal exercise program. So first I want to show how you can use this dynamic graph feature to get a general understanding of how a narrative evolved over time. And in order to do this, of course, you open any graph you want. It can be a text or maybe tweets, something where the chronological sequence of data makes sense and is important to, to the narrative. Um, and then you have two options here. So you have the dynamic graph settings on the left, which sets how you actually want to display the evolution of the graph. So there is a default setting and you can start with that. And then I will show you what the other options are and also the speed of the graph. So first I would just activate this. And then what happens is that the graph shows you only the statements that you see right now. So for example, you see I'm scrolling them and it shows with blue the statements that I currently see. And with the other color, what's shown is that this, the statements that were visualized before. So like this, I can see the evolution of the graph happening gradually over time. And of course, if I don't want to scroll myself, I can turn on the play button and change the speed of that. And then it will do this on its own. So you can just sit back and watch how the narrative of the text was constructed over time. And what's great is that every time there is a new iteration, all the topics, all the insights, all the influential elements are recalculated in real time. So your computer might um, become a little bit loud because it uses a lot of JavaScript resources, but basically you see at every point of time what's happening with the text. So what are the main topics that arise? What are the most influential elements? What are the insights, the structural gaps? all the stats and so on. And I use this feature to get a general overview of a text if the final interconnected network is too much. So for example, you see here, it kind of gives me a general idea of what the text is about, but if I want to see how it came to that point to this final structure, this feature is really useful. What I also like to set here is to not show the evolution towards the final graph. So in this case that we just see now, it shows you how the narrative evolved gradually over time. What you can also do is just to show the statements uh, that are visible now with a slight gap. So you kind of emulate a little bit the process of reading. When we read, we're really aware very clearly of what's happening at the moment when we read. But if we rewind 10, 
seconds before. We can recall a little bit less information and if it's maybe like 30 seconds before it's even less information. So this kind of emulates this natural way that we read and you see it kind of shows you the time span of the statements that you currently see. So what you currently see and a little bit before that. So you kind of trace a little bit in the memory how the narrative was building up and it's going to start erasing gradually the stuff that are too old from the graph. So this is also a great way to get an overview of a certain discourse to understand a certain idea better. You also have an option to use this as a, let's say, just to see the full structure and just to highlight the parts of the discourse that we're currently seeing. See, so it does this. So this is how you can use this feature. For example, it can be interesting to import something from Twitter. Let's say that we import the tweets of the day and we'll apply the same dynamic graph feature to those tweets to see how the story evolved over time. So it's the same way we visualize the graph and then we can just click on this play button and then Infernodus will show us how the tweets appeared over the period of time. Alexei is asking if it's possible to make a PDF snapshot of the specific moment of graph evolution. Uh, so, I mean, it doesn't have to be PDF snapshot, but yes, you could stop at any point, let's say here, and uh, save this graph as a PNG in the analytics panel. You see this button PNG, so it will export what you currently see actually as an image. Or you could also make a screenshot, or you could also print it and set it to save as a PDF, you know? So then, then it would work uh, like that as well. So yes, you could make a screenshot. Of course, you also have different settings here. Let's say, um, let's look at this one, visualize built up, so I have to save it and activate it again, and then launch it again. So you see here, you see the final structure of the graph kind of uh, grayed out, and then you see how the current discourse evolved over the final structure. So in comparison to before, uh, it was showing the gradual evolution, and here it just highlights the parts of the final structure that uh, you're seeing at the moment. And Alexei is also asking if it's possible to have a vector file. So actually it is possible, but uh, the tools that we use in the backend do not allow us to export it as a vector file. But what you can do is to export it as a GXF file, which is a graph format. And then you can open it with the software called Gephi which you probably know about, and uh, then you can use this to create a very high resolution image of this graph. But the PNG that you export here is actually sufficient for web purposes, and even if you print it, not so big. But yes, if you want to print it large format, you need uh, slightly different settings. Sam is asking if it's possible to visualize a timeline timestamps as the graph animates. Uh, well, it's kind of a visualizing right right now a timeline, uh, but in a chronological order. Um, I guess what you mean is probably if you can filter a certain time span and visualize only that, please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, if this is the case, then uh, it's a feature we're working on. So you will be able to see the exact time span of the text snippets and visualize only the part that belongs to this time span. Uh, does your API access available geographical Twitter data? No, not yet, uh, but it's in the works. It would be great to visualize where tweets are coming from over time. So you would not be able to visualize on this graph 
some kind of geographical map location, but what you will be able to do soon, and it's uh, the next feature which I wanted to demonstrate actually, um, is this new category feature. So the way it's gonna work is that it will import the tweets, and then it would, you, you would have an option to actually categorize them by the country, so you will be able to switch between the countries and see what the different visualization is. I'm not sure if this is the feature you're looking for, Sam, let me know if this is correct. And I'm going to move on to demonstrate this new feature now of categorizing the statements and notes. So for example, the easiest way to show is to actually import the news feed of the day. So for example, here, um, it's importing the news from the four sources, New York Times, The Guardian, the Washington Post and the Financial Times. And when it imports all those sources, so you can see the news here, you know, it's just the headline and the, and the link. You also can, by the way, choose to also have the uh, teasers of each article. So your graph will become a little bit more informative, but it's a good option to have an overview like that. And then when you go to filter tab here at the top left, you will see that it actually already can filter them by the news source where it's coming from. So you can see only the Washington Post articles, only the Financial Times one, only the New York Times ones, the Guardian. And you can also select several if you press and hold shift. So now we see Washington Post, New York Times, the Guardian. And now it's only Financial Times. So it's a great way to compare uh, the sources of a certain discourse or our specific newspapers are talking about uh, certain topics or not. For instance, here you see the Guardian and Washington Post look pretty different. So it means that today what they're writing about, um, they're actually similar in the way that they write about coronavirus in China. But for instance, the rest of the discourse looks like it's a little bit different. So for example, The Guardian is writing something about India, but not The Washington Post. Oh no, it also does that. So you see it kind of, but it gives more emphasis to the other articles. And you can see this, all the statistics is recalculated here. And soon we'll make it possible to also compare, just like you can compare the different graphs. And then for notice, you would be, you will be able to visualize what one new source is talking about that the other one is not talking about. Sam is asking, does this filter option expert into Gephi format? Could we reproduce this and change colors for a paper? So you can export this as a PNG, um, but I think that the current uh, GXIF, uh, so the Gephi format expert, it exports the whole graph actually. So I don't think that the data expert of this is available, but please, uh, if you could, post it into the requested feature on our forum. I'm going to send the link in the chat now. Like this, we can add it to the to-do list and uh, make it possible with the next update. I will show you now how you can also apply these categories manually. So for example, let's say you're adding a new text. Um, I'm just gonna give uh, some examples. So you see, I'm writing a statement and then in square brackets, I can specify the category that I want to use. So for example, I can actually add a few statements, separating them with uh, the enter sign. And then if I save them into the graph, what happens next is that you see these two statements here but if I click on filter, it will only show me the fruits or only vegetables. And it erases automatically the stuff that I had in the square brackets, which I designated uh, to show the category. You can also change that behavior. So if you want to keep the stuff in the square brackets, in the settings, you have an option here that you can say that the stuff that you have in the square brackets are recorded not added as nodes on the graph, but they're not re removed from the statement. So you select that. And then if you were to add, uh, let's say some more 
statements like this, for instance. And then you see it's not deleted, but it's still filtered. So you can choose to keep the square brackets in the text or to remove it completely. This can be pretty useful for the stuff like uh, Rome Research. Maybe you heard about this new tool, which is there for a few months, which basically allows you to connect uh, any nodes that you have together using this, this square brackets. So I'm going to demonstrate to you how you could actually export the data from Rome Research and then uh, visualize it as a graph. Um, I will just open that file and then I will demonstrate to you how this could be used. Okay, so first I would copy and paste the text uh, from the MD file that Rome Research generates. And here I took their publicly available uh, text. So basically you see the, the way it works is that you write notes and then you connect it to the other notes using the square brackets. So then you can kind of organize your notes in a way that you create links between them using the square bracket feature. And then if you just copy and paste and visualize it in Infranodus, what you're gonna get as a result is the visualization of just the words that you used in your notes. So you can have a better understanding of what your notes are about. So this, for instance, let's say idea, note. Let's delete this because this is used quite a lot. So this is also nice to just get rid of some stuff. And then we can see what our notes are about. And then for instance, if we just click on to do, we can see only the to-do note. So this feature can also be used to take care of your notes. And it also connects to another feature, which I wanted to demonstrate, is the new CSV import. Uh, so you have it available here in the import external data field, import a spreadsheet Excel file here. And then if you select that, choose a file. Um, I will use a demo file first, which is pretty easy. So here you have some example answer and some categories, the gender, the type, telephone, and so on. So when you choose the CSV file, it's going to preview it here. And you can choose to import all the stuff from the CSV file or only some columns. In this case, I will just import the answers. So then you see when I click on the answer, it's automatically selected here in the which data should we import field. And then you can also tell Infranodus which columns you want to use for tagging and categorizing your data. So for example, here it makes sense for me to categorize them by gender and by the type. You can actually choose two. So I will choose sex and type, pressing shift to select several options and then saving in this graph, okay, process. And then we have the graph visualized. And as you can see here, I have four different categories. So I can say it in front of this, okay, show me only male, external. So then it's only going to show me the stuff that have male and external inside. Or I can say, show me only the stuff that have female or only internal and so on. You see, so you can very quickly filter through your data and see, you know, the different aspects or have a different perspective on them. Timothy is asking or saying uh, that it would be incredibly useful to be able to pull in my list of saved articles from Pocket or Instapaper along with associated tags and visualize my interest graph similar to what you demonstrated with Rome. Yes, uh, Timothy, maybe you can send us the, an example of the expert that you can get from uh, 
the pocket or Instapaper. And we will see. Maybe it's very easy to actually set up an import feature for that because right now Infernodus understands most of the formats. So it would be great to take a look at the actual files and then we can integrate it. I just sent the link to the support portal in the chat and if you just submit a new ticket there or add it into requested feature, please let's take a look at that. Now I will show you how you can use CSV import with a, with a bigger file. So here I select uh, again another file and here it's my Asana tasks actually from the last weeks the stuff that I've been working on with Infranodus. And here again, it's previewing the file. So let's say I want to analyze the names of my tasks, like which words I use when I name tasks. You could also include descriptions as well, for example. But for this one, I will just take the names. So here, the right column is selected. And then which columns to use for tagging and categories and categorizing your data. So here I will say to use the section column field, which basically indicates the three types of tasks uh, that you also use in Scrum methodology, the epic task and spike and a few more that I added. So then we visualize it as a graph, this file, and then we can see all the tasks which I had. So a lot of it was about obviously graph because that's in the center of Infranodus, statements, categories, and then I can choose here to only show me the stuff that were spikes, for example, you see, so then I can see like, okay, my spikes were a lot about graph, layer, model, academic, import, but the actual tasks were about some other stuff, you know, so the more specific, uh, tasks which I gave to myself were about uh, time, evolution of topics over time. So it was this feature that I showed you today, the dynamic graph feature. You can also choose to see only the tasks that were also in, in the promote category or only to do stuff. So basically, as you can see, the original file it had uh, one column with, uh, with the name of the task and then another column with the category that, that it belonged to. So you could actually design your CSV file in any possible way. You know, you could specify that you want to use some two columns uh, to actually categorize and tag your data and then a few more columns to actually import the data. So this is how it would work with the new categorization feature using the CSV files. Another example of a CSV file that you might have is something very simple that looks like this here. So basically you see this is just a very simple from two. You could also have target source uh, and just basically import any graph data into Infranodus. Maybe you're using an existing graph database, you could take the data from there and save them as a CSV file where you have two columns, source and target. In the source you put all the nodes which are the source nodes, in the target you put all the targets. If there is a repetition of the same connection, it's going to be shown stronger on the graph. And here in this case I can just say that it should choose take all the data it sees. So it will use both columns. I don't have to select any of them. Here it says import all the columns. And I don't want any tagging. Process the data, visualize the graph, and then I can quickly see the different combinations of cities that we can have. So as you see here, we have one Asian cluster and one European cluster. So this is how you could also import data into CSV if you have some graph information or if you're analyzing some patterns of movements or connections. Timothy is saying again, when you're visualizing a graph build over time, are the node sizes increasing as more ed edges connected? Yes, they are. 
if I could view a rolling six week window of a graph, would be interesting to see how nodes appear and grow in size as interest importance grows and decreases over time as the connections fall off. Yes, you actually have this option. So when you open the graph, I will open the text again that I showed you just before here. So basically what you're talking about, let's say this is just a text, right? So um, it's a chronological text. And if you launch uh, the dynamic graph feature, it's going to show you how the text evolved over time. But the, in the same way, you could have some data uh, which is uh, which encompasses a six week period. And you would just treat it exactly the same. You know, you would uh, select the setting here. And what you need is this one, visible time span in the final graph. Like this, it will erase uh, the old stuff and emphasize the things that you see right now, adding to them a certain window of the previous statements. So I think this is what you were talking about. Okay, just going to select it again. So first you activate it, save it, and then activate, and then launch. And then as you see, it's gradually building up, showing you how the nodes appear and grow in size, and also removing the old stuff that are not relevant anymore. So you're always uh, viewing the snapshot of what was happening right now, let's say, if this was a, um, a sequence of tweets that happened over six weeks or some news articles that were published over the six week period, you would be able to see only a few current articles at the gap that you're currently watching that you can see here. So this is what it enables you to do. Okay, switch this off here. Another feature that I wanted to show you is this new mind viral immunity measure. And that is basically a reflection of the measure that we have here in the analytics panel that's called network structure. And network structure, actually, if you click here, it shows some statistics. And if you click on the question mark, it explains how it works. If you also ever need scientific references to all the parameters that we use, then you can click on this question button while your analytics panel is open. And it's going to explain to you what every measure means, giving you a reference to the scientific paper, which explains how it works. So if you're interested in more details about each of those measures, it's available there. But what I wanted to show you is how Infranodus analyzes the network structure automatically based on the modularity measure, based on how the most influential nodes are distributed among the main com communities in the graph, and also taking into account how many nodes uh, or wards are located in the top community. And based on this information, it uh, shows to you what the network structure is like. So. If the network is really interconnected, it's going to be focused. If it's dispersed, it's going to show that it's diverse or dispersed. If it's really focused on one or two influential elements, it's going to be biased. So biased means that the community structure of the graph is uh, not very pronounced, that it's quite homogenous, that the nodes are really interconnected, and that there is only a few main influential elements around which the narrative rotates all the time. And then based on this measure, we also calculate uh, this uh, measure of mind viral immunity. And basically, um, there is an article on the subject on the Nodus Labs website. I'm going to send you the link right now. And the way it works is that we use the analogy from social networks. You know, if you look at the social network, this is a visualization of the social network. Uh, it's the Twitter accounts that tweeted about Elon Musk's uh, Neuralink last week. 
And inside Infernodus, you have a feature that allows you to import just the connections between the Twitter accounts, so which people retweeted each other and so on. So you can see the social network of a certain discourse. And as we see here, it's quite dispersed. So it's very hard for ideas to spread through this network because you basically have two main nodes. If they send something, then it's going to spread. But all these islands which you see um, around there at the periphery, it's more difficult for information to reach them. So obviously this network is quite immune, but it's also not so efficient in spreading information. Then um, if you look at the at another example, so let's say if the nodes were a little bit more interconnected, then we have something like a small world network where you have several distinct group of nodes which are densely connected together and those groups of nodes uh, are also connected but not so densely. So you have some kind of level of heterogeneity in the graph uh, but at the same time all the communities that exist inside can synchronize on the global level. So this kind of structure was shown to be quite efficient for propagating information, but it's also quite resilient because it doesn't happen instantaneously and it has time, let's say if we talk about infection and not information, it has time to heal itself also while the infection is reaching the next node. We have all the references here, by the way, to all the scientific papers that talk about this. Um, <clears throat> so it's from the field of epidemiology and there are some really interesting works there. And let's say if we look at the extreme example of this graph, which is really interconnected, it means that it, as soon as you pass a piece of information or infection to one node, it's going to spread very quickly through the whole graph. And such networks that have a high uh, proportion of random connections between the nodes, so they're not anymore so structured, everyone is connected to everyone else, they have been shown to be able to mobilize very quickly so it's very easy for them to sink in and to unify for a collective action, but they're also quite susceptible to external influence. So for example, if you were to pass on a virus to them or a meme or a fad, they would get into it very quick. And the way that uh, the cascades happen in the network is very volatile in a network like this. So basically it's a less stable structure, but the structure that can mobilize better. And what we did is, uh, we actually transferred uh, this analogy to text networks, to knowledge networks, um, proposing to think of them in the same terms. You know, you look at the structure of the network. If a text network is uh, super dispersed, which we found, by the way, was the case for most poetry, because it's not trying to make only one point. It's actually talking about different things, you know, um, then this network is going to be dispersed, so it has high mind viral immunity in this case. If your network on the other side is super interconnected, so usually it's highly ideological texts which are trying to present a certain agenda, they will be really interconnected, their immunity is low because uh, they can spread information very quickly, the narrative is very susceptible to propagate ideas in a very fast way, but also, this propagation is very short-lived. So you have some kind of trade-offs in both situations and depending on your objectives and uh, goals, you might want to be dealing with a different network structure. So for example, in this example, we analyzed the actual text which was writing about this stuff up, up to this point. And here you can see it on the graph. It got a high level of mind viral immunity probably because it's not trying to make only one point, it's making a few points. So you have some level of heterogeneity in the graph and uh, it allows you to see the different opinions, let's say different perspectives. And you can of course apply the same to any discourse. So for example, if we look at this text, we see that its network structure is focused. So it means it's quite interconnected and the modularity score is pretty low. It's actually on the verge of uh, having distinct communities, but it's kind of very interconnected. So for example, if, if it's uh, a motivational speech uh, or something that should uh, 
incite people to move to do something, it might be a good thing that uh, it has a low measure of my viral immunity because it's less immune itself, but it's also um, easier somehow to understand and it's easier to use this text to promote a certain idea, but only one. On the other side, if we were to write a scientific paper or maybe an overview of a certain field, we are actually interested to have a high score in mind viral immunity. So the structure is more dispersed. It means it proposes several different points of view and you can use it you know, to um, estimate how heterogeneous your discourse is or how connected and homogeneous it is. So this is something that you can use for any types of data. Let's say if we look at the news here, actually, yeah, this is two hours ago. So we see it's quite dispersed. If I show you the news, maybe I can even demonstrate uh, earlier when we were importing news, um, news of the day on coronavirus. What was happening is that uh, this news, they had actually very low structure so for example let's say we go somewhere to march or something like this daily news this one for instance it's in the beginning of april i think or something like that let's see what the score is like here Maybe this graph is not in the system. Is it this one? Oh no. The errors sometimes pop up and we're working on this. So basically what was happening during the time when the coronavirus was uh, overwhelming on the news agenda of most newspapers you had one really central node, coronavirus, and then uh, the rest were aligned around it. So the level of mind viral immunity was quite low. And uh, this means that the discourse, the narrative was focused on a few topics and kind of was rotating, oscillating around them all the time. So this is something that you could also use to estimate how diverse uh, the structure of the discourse is or how dispersed it is for any sort of data for tweets or news for your own text you can even use it when you're writing ideas so for example i like to use infernodos like this that i just opened the generate insight tab and uh, just start writing and gradually infernodos is going to give me live feedback on the graph structure of my text and I will see, you know, how I can develop this discourse further to make it actually here in the inside tab, it always recommends to either develop periphery or to make it more connected, depending on which extreme you're going towards. Somehow it always tries to balance you back into the opposite of where you are. Bosco is asking if we plan to upgrade the software to understand the meaning of words. So this is a, it's a good question because uh, then another question I have is uh, what kind of meaning you would like to derive actually from every word. You know, do you want to be able, for example, to use uh, synonyms together? So for example, Infernodus would realize that, uh, let's say mind and brain is something similar and they should be connected to one node or what, what kind of meaning you, you would like to actually have in the situation. So this would be my question also to you if you're interested in this feature, if you could let us know a little bit more, or maybe even now during the Q&A session, if you can let me know what you mean by the meaning, because there's a lot of different ways to analyze uh, words. No, you can tag them as the part of speech, you could detect uh, entities, and only import connections between the entities that were detected. 
you could also use the synonyms of different words to indicate that they actually belong to the same cluster and so on. So I would be interested to know uh, what 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 kind of features you would like to have that relate to the meaning of the words. So I think this is it for now. I demonstrated uh, all the features that I wanted to show you today. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the chat or in the Q&A session. I also have a poll that I wanted to ask you to, to respond to. So if you could do that, just for us to know what kind of input features you're using and what data you like to take from the outside. So it should now be available in your Zoom. Okay, as I see, uh, quite a few people are using CSV import. So I hope that this newly updated and more convenient import feature, I mean, it's not, of course, perfect in terms of usability. There is a lot that can be done, but at least now, you can, you know, select stuff easily and uh, choose uh, which columns you want to use as tags and so on. You even have advanced settings here where you could separate the file into different graphs. So you could specify which column will have a tag separating into different graphs. So for instance, if you have a column with a gender, male, female, you could say use that column to separate all my data into two graphs, male and female. Like this, you will be able to compare them both and uh, see what the differences are. Uh, so now I will answer the questions. I will end the poll. It turned out that quite a lot of people are using CSV import and, uh, and also Twitter. I'm going to share them with you. Like this, you can see the results. CSV, Twitter, Google search results, news, RSS feeds, no one is using them. Okay, so now we'll answer the rest of the questions that we have. Okay, so Timothy is asking, is the graph det detecting big grams or only single words? For example, can it understand machine learning as a single idea? So yes, you have this as an option right now that when you add ideas, let's say manually, you can use a hashtag and then the underscore. So then it's going to be treated uh, you see as a, as a phrase. If you wanted to do that, in uh, some text that you have, you could basically, uh, right now, find and replace the specific terms that you would like to be uh, treated as phrases like that. Um, and also we're working on the feature which would allow you to create some kind of dictionary so you don't have to manually search and replace, but you can say which terms you want to connect together. So for example, even something like this that when you look at the graph, you would be able to say that, okay, let's say uh, day and week, they should be treated as one single node day of the week, for example, and you would be able to specify it like that. We might also introduce named entity detection and have them automatically processed this way and you would be able to adjust it in setting. However, Timothy, also an important thing is that uh, in the trends, you have actually all the big grams detected here. So you can see that, for example, in this particular text on exercise, you have a day squad is the most frequent big gram, day of the week, set of reps, it's the type of exercises, week training, week, week program. So you have this big gram data and you can download it. Um, this is the undirected big RAM, so it kind of combines both directions, but, but you can also down, download the directed ones if you want. 
so you're saying a dictionary would be great for phrases. Yeah, so basically you would not mind then to enter everything manually or um, would you like also some automatic uh, default setting for most phrases? Because um, I'm, I'm just asking because I'm curious, you know, if you're interested in this feature, what would be the best um, use case scenario for you that you just add your own stuff and based on that, the software processes your data or you want to have some default setting that uh, yeah okay so automatic would be great right okay so maybe we first make it uh, manual and then uh, based on how people use it we'll see how we can make it automatic I think with some with named entities for instance it would be very easy to introduce that and with some concepts like machine learning which are de detectable usually, you know, and then if you have more specific stuff, then you could specify it in additional settings. So I think that's how we're going to do that. Sam is saying another interesting meaning would be emotion. You could use the IBM Watson emotional lexicon, for example. So Sam, you mean to kind of create, um, let's say like a category or a tag for every statement that tags its emotion or some ability to see inside the analytics panel, uh, you know, what's the emotional sentiment of, of a statement. So I would be curious to know that. Jury is writing, hello, Jury. It was nice to talk to you last week. Sorry, I lost my Zoom window earlier. Is it possible to show thumbnails for the tweets before shown in the graph or at least on the side nails? So, well, I mean, you have the, Tweets usually shown here. Let me find something where we have the tweets. Yeah, these are the tweets. So I don't know what you mean, the thumbnails, like we have the tweets here, but maybe you mean some smaller representation of tweets or to show them on the graph. Images. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, right, right now the images are not shown. Um, if you think it could be an interesting feature, it would be great if you add it into the support portal. And then if people vote for it, then we would introduce it into the next updates. Jim Lies asking, are you using this JS under the covers? Your graph layout is incredibly quick. No, it's not this JS, it's called Sigma JS. I'm going to send it to the chat now. And in the Q&A, it's a great piece of software from my friend and collaborator back in the day, uh, Alexis Giacomi from Paris. No, he's not in Paris, I think. And he created this beautiful software, open source Sigma JS. It's a JavaScript library. He's working together with his partner, Guillaume, I think he's called. Maybe I'm wrong, but they're both of them are really great. And uh, they also developed a really good graphology library, which can perform all kinds of calculations on uh, on the graphs so you can get all kinds of stats from the graph using this library and those two they work really well in combination and i think they're working on developing a new iteration of both uh, so you would have all these features in one but yeah check out sigma js it's open source it's really easy to use and it works great it's a bit slow when you're dealing with a few thousand nodes and uh, let's say from eight thousand edges in the graph then it will really depend on your computer. But for the graphs that you can also easily visually understand, uh, which actually should not have more than a few hundred nodes, it works perfectly. Because if you visualize something that has 2000 nodes, you will anyway have to apply filters and stuff like that to make sense out of them. Right, Sam is just uh, making it more precise about the feature in the panel that shows emotional stance sentiment of a statement. Okay, I got that. Uh, 
maybe of a set of statements also. I'm just thinking that uh, for each statement, because the statements are quite short. I mean, we could make something that you click on the statement and then it shows uh, some information about that statement, like the all the metrics for it and the emotional statement and so on. But it could also show it for the whole graph or for the category that you currently select. So maybe this could be also something interesting. I don't know. Let me know if you think it could be useful in any way. And Timothy is saying, have you ever thought about or considered the best ways to visualize this material on mobile? This is something I've always struggled with. Well, actually, it works on mobile. If you take your iPhone and you go to infranodus.com, you will be able to see all the graphs on mobile and even manipulate them. It's actually really good because if you have something like iPad with a slightly bigger screen, it's really a pleasure to manipulate the graph with your own hands and to be able to turn it around, to zoom in, zoom out with the pitch gestures, and it works. Sometimes um, it could be a little bit more responsive, and this is something, of course, we want to improve. Uh, but also bear with us, because there is a lot of challenges, uh, the features that we want to program in, and uh, the usability stuff, and also the database crashes sometimes, so we just need to make priorities and make sure it works, and then... Uh, make things fast after but uh, yeah you can use it on mobile and, and on the iPad and actually it's pretty good um, try it out it works quite well okay so if no one oh yeah so let's just read the answer from Sam. I asked him about the type of emotional evaluation of each topic, overall evaluation of each topic, themes, strongest dependence centrality, focus, diversity models, emotional sentiment score. Okay, yeah. I will see how we could integrate this because I think we'll do it at the same time as the named entity re recognition will come in. So, uh, yes, uh, this will be on the to-do list. And Wayne is also saying adding a method for assessing weights would be helpful. Yes, I agree with you absolutely. Uh, you have now somehow a visual representation of the connection. Let's say here you see black people is a very strong connection. I think it was because of the killing in the US. Uh, these are the tweets from 40 minutes ago, yeah? So you have, the connection is pretty strong and it's shown as a thicker on the graph. And then if you go to the trends in the big grams, you will also see the weight. So it takes the weight into account, but right now it looks at the number of occurrences of the same connection. Also, if, if the phrase black people was used a lot in the particular discourse, then every time it's been used, the weight increases and then you will see this reflected on the graph you will see it re reflected in the statistics and you will also see it in the trends. But what we're working on also is to be able to import, let's say, the CSV file import that I showed you earlier on, that you take the file and uh, let's say, what, what can I choose? Uh, just something a bit easier. Like, let's say I have this graph with the connections, so for example, that you could add one more column, weight, and then specify how strong you want the connection to be. So if this is what you mean, please let me know, because uh, I would be curious uh, if this is a feature that you're talking about. Also, please feel free to let me know now or later if you're having any problems with your workflow with reliability of software. Um, of course, it's not always perfect, but we're always trying to improve it. So if you have any feedback on what could be improved, please let me know. Maybe some really urgent features that you think should be there, but are not yet, and you're asking yourself why. So I'm leaving again the support portal link in the chat, and I would be very happy if you write and uh, you know give some suggestions for what works well and uh, what could work better 
This webinar, as I said, will be available on our YouTube channel, which I'm going to send you also in the chat in just a second. And you will also have a lot of different tutorials there on how to use Infranodus. So it could be something interesting for you. If you have a few minutes, just choose the, the one that you like and uh, you will be able to see this. Also on the support portal, we have quite a lot of different uh, tutorials, texts, which explain how to use all the different features of Infranodus. So I'm sending you the YouTube channel here and then you have the support portal link in the chat as well. Um, it's actually right Oh, no, this is going to go into the internal one. So, yeah, this is the support portal. And you can see there are some stuff here. So, for example, in how to use Infranodos, you have a lot of different materials on the workflow sequence. So, for example, starting from how you can use Infranodos to discover information, find a niche, develop an idea, and then some kind of like more interesting creative and playful stuff where my viral immunity goes in and then you also have some articles on how to present your ideas and expert graphs and embed them as URLs or share them with other people importing external data and also frequently asked questions where you have a lot of different uh, workflows explained and then there is another section on the basic concepts of network science, which we're working on expanding now, but you already get all the basic stuff in there. And then finally, case studies, where you can see how you can do text mining, sentiment analysis, generate insight and measure diversity of the discourse using Infranodes. So I invite you to use this. And also there is a forum on there, so you can share your use cases and questions if you go here. There's a few sections here, so if you have any feature requests, if you need technical support, or if you want to share some of the stuff you worked on using Infranodus, or maybe not, maybe other software, please don't hesitate to post it there. Thank you very much for your attention and for your time. It was a pleasure giving this presentation to you. I hope it was interesting and uh, I could provide you some useful information. Feel free to contact me through the support portal is the best because then I ensure that your email will be responded to as fast as possible. Thank you very much for your attention. The next webinar is going to happen in a week. Maybe we will change time to accommodate for the people who live um, in Asia, um, but I will keep on doing these webinars every week, always focusing on a certain topic. And if you have a specific question you would like to ask, uh, maybe you have a use case you would like me to work on during the webinar, or even if you want to share your own workflow and your own way of using Infranodus with others, then I could uh, add you as a, as a panelist and then you would be able to, you know, also showcase the way that you use um, Infranodus in your work. We have quite an interesting crowd of people uh, joining in and using Infranodus. They're all really talented and they're all working on super interesting stuff. So it might make sense also to share what you're working on with the others. And uh, I would be very happy to help you with that. And of course, also to use the uh, Nodus Labs portal and our social media to promote your work as well, whether you're using Infranodus or not. Thank you very much for your time and for for your attention and I see you next week. Thank you. Have a nice day.